I usually bring cookies <laughs> from the stone house. Fair enough. But it's only when I have invoices and pay. Do you get any invoices, Barry? Do you know what Christy said anything about coming to the authority? I think everybody needs to sign in. Really? We have a yes, you have to sign public in. hearing. Uh, the COVID oh, COVID. Yeah, sure. Ah, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Bonnie's not gonna be here. Michelle's not gonna be here. Jay's a little more detail. We do a lot of voting today. Yeah. Well, that's one. No quorum. Just change your voice. You know. Ah, uh, minutes from the last meeting on November the ninth. I had a chance to look at it. Move to approve. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Report. This is at the year end, Rick Beth said. HWC engineering has filed a claim for $5,724.88. We call it invoice number two. This is for everything that they've done on up to date and up to that date. That's correct. On, on the 421 widening project. Yes. The uh, survey part of it. This is okay. the survey portion of it, yeah. Okay. And and right away discovery. Okay. All right. Yeah, we have a motion and a second for clay approval of clay 191 for $11,481.
So after the discovery phase, will we have everything we need to go to those uh, affected? Uh, I'll, I'll probably have it. Okay. Yeah. I appreciate funding your Dropbox research. Your what? Your Dropbox research. research. What do I do? That's the miscellaneous reimbursable drop, Dropbox research. Oh, that's. I feel like we're like the National Science Foundation. <laughs> so you, you, we pull. Um, there, there's a service that will pull deeds, do you pull deeds from, so you don't have to come visit the courthouse. It's a, it's a, that's what a drop yeah. box Yeah. <laughs> you threw me there for a minute, bro. Yeah? Claim Just number, keep me on your test. Claim number 192 is from Emerson and Manahan to allow attorney services throughout the year of 2020. Uh, in the amount of five thousand over six hundred and twenty-five dollars. Yes, <laughs> negotiate. I'm moving for claim one ninety-two fifty five thousand six twenty-five. Second. Any discussion on that? I have a motion to approve claim one ninety-two to Emerson and then hand for five thousand six hundred and twenty-five dollars. Say aye. 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 Claim number 194 is for series <coughs> 2014 on no, no. $108,403. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries on claim 194 to Regents Bank for the bond 2014 for $108,403.13. And then claim number 195 is also to Regents Bank. It's for the bond of the 2015 series. It's for $47,784. Mm -hmm. 
approve claim 195 in the amount of $47,748. Oops, excuse me, $47,784.38. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries for claim 195, payment of $47,704.38. Any other claims of error? That is the extent of the claim. Say what? The auditor may tell you that we've received, Beth may tell you of our distribution, the distribution that we received in the tax increments was $510,708.50 and a $10,081, which is sort of in between the Delphi City, it's part of the Delphi City, but still part of our TIF area. And that's $10,000. So total revenue will be about, well, for this six-month period,
of working through that with NDOT, um, and then what we need to, you know, how we're, timing wise, we would do ours. Um, it's, it's a possibility we could go ahead and do the surface, redo it through the limits of the project, somehow maybe get NDOT to pay up, you know, pay the county for that prop, you know, for that, that one section. Um, Estimate just a rough idea of what the surface would cost for the um, widened portion is about 100 to 150,000. Kind of depends on what the asphalt price is going to be at that time. That's just for the white part. That's not for the actual, you know, we do the whole surface. So that's where we are. We're uh, so we're starting to uh, design, get get the full design, and know exactly what uh, utilities need to be coordinated with and what right away we will need to be purchased and then start reaching. Property owners. We did put hangers on everybody's door when we surveyed it, and we had, I think it was Matthew Brown, which is a property owner down there. He was selling, he was, there was a for sale sign out in front of one of the houses down there, so I assume it was him. He was wondering how it would impact him. Um, the for sale sign's not there, or at least it wasn't this morning when I drove by, so I'm not sure if he's resold it or still selling it or took it off the market and wanted to wait until this came. Was he concerned about something? You know, yeah. I mean, he's concerned that it's going to be higher. So what, what, would the, what did the hangar state? What, I mean, what information do they have? Basically that we were just, do, we're, we're going to be in the area, we're going to be surveying, it'll be a project in the future to potentially widen, I think, to the, the uh, U.S. 421. I mean, limited, very limited information, but let oh. know people walking around out here, this is, this is what they're doing. If you got questions, call us. Yeah, and that's what he did. He just yeah. called and said, yeah. hey, what's, you know, I just want to know more information. Yeah. So that's, that's the only feedback or only contact that we've had with property ownership. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think he was more concerned of, just the know, if he potential sold, impact of the sale. Yeah, he's going to sell several thousand dollars. So that's where we are. I'll have a better idea um, next meeting, kind of property-wise, what we need, and hopefully we'll have better. We've had good communications with ACOM, not so great with NDOT, just because they haven't been in the office and over the holidays, it's just like, we gotta, we gotta still coordinate. Them. So was it ACOM's uh, uh, culvert extension independent of our road widening project? Uh, and I believe I, I, they, and I, I'm getting this second hand from our engineer, but he said that there is like 25 or 30 culverts that they're going to impact in the whole width of their project. I thought their project was just resurfacing. That's what we thought too. But apparently it's not. I don't know. <laughs> Because or, resurfacing, or uh, resurfacing wouldn't you affect should, drainage or culvert. They should not know. So what what is the scope of their project? I don't know. I I believe it to be still be resurfacing, but for some reason I think as they're resurfacing they want to address these culverts too. And I don't there again yet. I don't I yeah. don't know. I'm just yeah. getting the second hand. So. Yeah, exactly. But you know what what engineering design work they're doing irrespective of the widening, and then you overlay the widening on top of that, kind of negates the need for them to do engineering work regarding widening culverts that are going to already be widened with your scope of, yeah. of work. Yeah. So, through, no, that's, we're one, we're one little portion of their 10 mile, you know, how long project. they're doing the yeah. research. Yeah. They're going to Florida. Or, much farther south. We're, we're, we're right. So their scope of work is, you know, entire uh, stretch of X miles. Uh, yeah. So that culvert widening may be is related the as way. much so to other parts of the road mm -hmm. as this. Not, yeah, not ours. We're going we're gonna to handle that. Yeah. We're going to handle what's ours and take care of everything. Mm -hmm. so, so maybe they're just looking at, you know, this project to get up to their current code, maybe with some other culverts that aren't extending I, far enough I think that's beyond yeah. other portions of the road, yeah. not not specific to this section from a bind PC. 
in a way, I, I, the research that we found on our um, right of way documentation that, and I didn't bring that specific piece, but it appears that right of way was designated at some point in the 70s, but never recorded. And so that may be what happened with these culverts that extend out the side, out, out further than the road. If they're touching that culvert, now they need to feel like they need to have right away to that culvert. It's not the road, but it's maybe extends outside of that implied right away. In the very conservative when it comes to dealing, doing work in people. You know, they, they want to make sure it's their right away. Yeah, yeah. You know how many culverts there is in between winding and windows? I guess. That's fine. I'm just kind of curious if, you know, how many colors we'd be looking at. So it's, we're trying, it's we're hard for us to align our work with their work when the, their timeline is moving. And, and it's really not desirous for us to do our work, put down the base, and let it set for a year because... I would not want to do that. I mean, just, you're going to have cars on even and trucks. Well, yeah, and I mean, you, but you'd have a transition there from, you know, from one to the other. But, uh, I mean, it's not ideal. But, I mean, it's going to exist for a period of time, regardless. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's just whether it's, I just rather do it two months rather than yeah months 12. or <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah or twelve or more. Yeah. But yeah. there's always options. Then. I I I feel like we should push forward as fast as we can. So that we're at least we're, get it to a point where it's ready to go, and then if we have to wait delay bidding it, we can delay it. Uh -huh. Nothing, nothing is really going to change. Uh, if if their work is pushed back maybe a full year, I mean it's I mean other than if we bid it and then we delayed it, then we got to rebid it. No, yeah. I mean the only thing is if if a development comes that changes the traffic flow. Uh, yeah. We're trying to design it so it <laughs> meets some of those. Right. right. Talking about design, is it not given a favorable opinion to that the, the lane would not have to stop? Have they given a favorable opinion on that? Yes. And it is positive. The, the turn lane from County Road 100 going north? Correct. Yes. Well, the pine seal is over. Ish. Okay. I got you. As of the, today, the, they have the a gentleman positive. we talked to at NDOT has a blessed it. Now, it, it may go through some other people. We've had that happen before, so I don't want to say yes 100% Josh, but I, I believe you know, that's come from NDOT. That Smart ideas do win out on occasion. We hope. Brian Acon, who is Acon? 
It's uh, A E C O N. Um, they are a uh, consulting engineering firm that was hired by NDOT. Okay. They work for NDOT to do the resurface, the mill and resurfacing of 421. Mm -hmm. And it's a longer, I don't know the limits of the project, but it basically starts at the bridge. I think that's where they left off last time. Do you remember when they did that? Yeah, they, they did that a couple years ago and it stopped at the bridge. And so I think it picks up at the bridge and it's just basically you know, milling a couple inches off and putting a couple inches of surface. So when you're referring to the contacting the designer, are you contacting the designer for Acon? Mm -hmm. or, yeah. Or the designer in um, Both. We, 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 we dealt with Alan uh, Holderred. He was, the, he was the gentleman that came here, I think, maybe right. a year and a half ago. He, he is a designer at NDOT, but they have also contracted this with AECOM. He's kind of, I think he's managing this for AECOM. And Ben is the guy at AECOM. We can have his name somewhere. So really you could use AECOM and NDOT interchangeably. Yes. Okay. Yep. Ben Carnahan. Well, your, your quick estimate is that we could spend up to two hundred thousand dollars extra by resurfacing and making it very level if we expand it, widen our section out, and then we wait a year. I'm just throwing out figures, Brian. I'm not mm -hmm. too. No. Nope. Yep. So based on um, our initial estimate, that was the initial layout. Um, we're anticipating about 929 tons of surface on just just our portion, just of what we've widened. That's not that's not fixing the pothole. You know what's already out there milling that. And so we usually use a number of around 100 to 120, 150 dollars per ton per ton. Yeah. It'll change. Um, you know, uh, asphalt was pretty cheap back in May when oil was trading for zero dollars. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, but it's been, you know, we've seen it up to 150 now. So, I mean, if you just take about $100 a time, you're, you're about $90,000, $95,000, $100,000 just for our portion. Okay. Um, that didn't include anything if we're going to extend that turn lane right. and coming north that we talked about doing. So mm -hmm. that's just our portion. You know, then, then if you go back and you will, you know, travel lanes, that they were going to do, then they can add, you know, a few hundred thousand dollars on top of that, which is in that support. But right now, our estimate, construction estimate for the work is about a million, which was less than what we had originally estimated oh. when we were talking about. Well, now that I, that's, that could change and don't hold me to it, but that's where I work. So, possibly an option. If, if their project is, you know, say indefinitely delayed or at least delayed by a minimum of a year, is it possible that NDOT would reimburse us for completing that with surfacing? And so they wouldn't you have to? I, I think anything's on the table. Oh, plus, I, don't know. I think it's a, I think it might be a, a good, that, I think at some point we will have that conversation and maybe we can get a better answer. That, that would maybe be more desirable than just uh, like leaving it at the base level and not putting a top grade. Okay. Right, right. I, think, I think their thought was is that even if we had 100 tons or you know, 90, you know, 900, 1,000 tons, whatever, you know, they're going to have 50,000 tons yeah. on their project. Yeah. So they'll, yeah. they may get it for $90 a ton, which yeah. is 100 dollars Anything else for Brian? Do you got anything else now? Um, so you say surveying is complete? Surveying. So do we have the legals for the right of ways needed? No. No. I don't have that yet because I don't have the design completed yet. Okay. So got got the survey done, then we'll we'll lay out the road and then determine how much 
how much additional yeah, we'll have, and yeah. then we'll produce those yeah. documents, and then that's when um, WSP, which you have a different contract with, will start doing the right-of-way negotiation and property. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you, Brian. Mm -hmm. Any old business? Barry? I don't have anything further. I can introduce Jake Adams, the new EGDC director to the RBC. And do you want to go around or do you know everybody? Or how do you want to do this, Jake? I'll, just, I'll go ahead and talk. Hi, Jake Adams. I'm from Carroll County. Uh, I've been doing workforce development primarily through North Central Indiana Variety Tech and the Region 4 Workforce Board. Um, so workforce and economics is I'm not a stranger to. Um, and so since accepting the position for Carroll County, um, I'll be working with you guys um, hopefully pretty intimately um, in some of the projects we're working on and future growth and I guess what our vision looks like um, as a team. So I'm sure the EDC and RDC will be uh, hand in hand in a lot that we do. So um, I'm always accessible. I'll leave my cell phone there. You can have it like you guys don't um, if there's ever a concern, question, or thought about how we can make things better, I'm, I'm just a phone call away. So. All right. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Appreciate it. And I know we, we work closely with, with the EDC before we'll be working together on that. Uh, one thing I do have before we adjourn is I met with the city of Delphi in the latter part of November and showed them where we, our strategic plan was in 2016, uh, we were thinking residential housing would be an ideal spot. And so I asked the council, Delphi Council, City Council, to come up with some ideas of where they was thinking residential housing would be a good spot. And I have not gotten back or heard anything from them yet on what they are still thinking or doing about that. And the other thing is, do you guys feel like we need to update our strategic plan since it was done in 2016? Um, where are we at on the residential tip, uh, that whole discussion? Well, that was a discussion that we kind of had over lunch with Jake and them. Is, is we're kind of sitting here going, okay, What's the cat? Where's the county going to be at? What do they want to do with residential tip? And then, do we have somebody that wants to build that needs help with that from us yeah. to help? So I think it's it's he's got some ideas of maybe getting some people together and meeting with the RBC and see what they want, and what we want, and whether we can make it work out or not. And we've thrown around a couple different ideas today in different spots in the county. So I think it's kind of up to us to know how far we want to pursue this. And I think, for Jake's purpose, I say go ahead and get a couple guys explore the possibilities, explore the possibilities of where we want to go with this. So, so in, in, in light of not having anything definitive uh, on that and won't for some time. Do we want to wait until we have more information on that to update our strategic uh, plan? I, that, I guess, yeah, I don't have a problem with waiting or going. I mean, the biggest question we have mm -hmm. is, okay, if we wait, then we'll know what we probably need to put in our strategic plan with residential housing. If we do it beforehand, we might put something in that we don't know whether we want it or not. So I, I can go either direction on this. It's mm -hmm. than, well, the, the, the uh, residential tip is just a tool. I mean, it is right. a tool, but we've got to talk about residential housing and right. strategic I mean, plan. Yeah. That's, that's what really what my, my point is. like the, the tool would be used to execute the plan, so you would need to have your plan done and then you know, use whatever tools are appropriate to, yeah. to get there. Yeah. So I, I would be in favor of taking a look at the street plan personally. There's, yeah. there's a lot of stuff in that, in, in that strategic plan from 16 that's still applicable. I mean, it might be... 
that's why I, we might have to tweak some things because I mean, we have not even touched this. You may, you may want to delve into some more detail well, yeah. on some of those. A lot of these tools aren't even available in 2016. Yeah, I think, yeah, I, I think that it's going to allow me to be able to have a smoother conversation uh, with development partners. Um, if there's an updated strategic plan that lists the specific tools that the RDC and our county are wanting to use to leverage their investment. So anything that I can take to the table that allows that conversation to be more thorough and letting them know we need business, um, because with housing, we are competing with other communities, um, and, we, and so we really are underhanded in, in, in the relationship. Tools like a strategic plan from the RDC that's laser focused on residential development will allow us to have those conversations a little bit easier. So, what do you guys want to do? Do you want us work in February? So, it gives us a little more time, or March, January? I'd like to talk to Amita to find out what she's thinking, what does the city look like that, and even. With Jake being from Florida, maybe some ideas of where Florida wants to be. I don't know. So, I mean, almost the whole county correct. Is, 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 I mean, because what we're doing is supporting the dip with workforce, you know, I mean, right. all four corners, I mean, to the, to the extent that they qualify right. for the program, right. are all, you know, uh, on the table. Let me get back with Amita and uh, we'll discuss in the February meeting and then we're going to set up the strategic plan. I'll we'll get copies of the 2016 strategic plan and I'll follow them up. You got it, Barry? <laughs> I got it, I got it. Fair I'll get it to you or whatever. Okay. I have a copy of the 2017 strategic plan. I'll, I'll get it to your office and then you can get a copy of that. Can you email it out? I can email it. Yes, I can. I can email it. What's the plan we put together? What's the plan we put together? You guys, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you're going to email me. Jake, the meetings for RDC are the second Monday of the month at yeah. 1 o'clock. Thank you, Larry. So, February 8th. Oh, we're on a Thanksgiving <laughs> We'll go with Jay. February the 8th at 1 o'clock. Here at the courthouse in the most southern. I'm like a higher demand. I'm coming one day and won't seem necessary. I'm going to be gone next uh, meeting in February. Then, for how long? You purchased month of February. Okay. Yeah, well, this is something we need to discuss for the next we, we, should, we can do our contract negotiation with Barry in the next meeting. Motion to adjourn. Second. All right. All right. We want these claims back. We want these people. Thank you.